tight song. I'm gonna turn this off so if I get a fucking notification we don't get blared out by the KO song. I like that bury that song because they bury everything cool. So I'm, I'm gonna put over the Steam store a little bit. If you blocked me on Twitter, you should get rid of you should get rid of that like bongo sound that your phone makes. That's what the uh, speaker makes. It's not my phone. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna have any like bongos. I was thinking, yeah, like why would you? That's not really my thing. I, I, would have a, I would have a maraca or something. Or like a gong. Yeah, that's dude Japan adjacent, or even slightly Japan. So. Every day I think about the idea of us having a PWT shop ever since you told me about the $5,000. <laughs> you wake up in the morning and yes. think, not, I have to have my own No, merch. I don't like wake up in the morning. I just think you of dream us having it. a shop. Yeah. <laughs> Under Dude. the podcast section next Dude. to ML Dub. Yeah. I think Gorilla needs a coffee pot and a microwave. Like I think a we need our own nitro. <laughs> That'd be tight. Dude, like on top of the Gorilla yeah. fridge. We, nitro? We need, yeah, we need our own nitro girls. We should just, we should just put yeah. a Keurig back here. Keurig would be tight. Dude, a Keurig would be That's sick. a gimmick. Because it's a gimmick. That's yeah. gimmick coffee. Yeah. yeah. There's you no just, more gimmick coffee. Yeah. Unless uh, you're okay. getting some weird... I had a Keurig. those things, like 100 bucks? You can get like a... Yeah, yeah. you can get a small one, like gorilla-sized one. They're about like $149 bucks. or something like that nowadays, but... I've got one, and it's amazing. Yeah. I fucking I had one. Keurig. I had one, I literally like sold it at a yard sale. Because Hannah wanted to go back to a shoot coffee pot. We never bought cake. Oh, you don't K-Cups. have one anymore? You used to have one. I know, yeah. So. I, I was see, It was later, it was sitting in the garage. That's what's like. crazy is I don't like a shoot coffee machine. Yeah. Because, what? one, the glass, if you don't wash it hella good, it gets mm-hmm. crunked up. It's gross. That's part of the gimmick, though. I know, but your coffee tastes like shit. Whereas Keurig's, usually, the good ones are self-cleaning. You get a nice, yeah. flavorful what? coffee what with What did you like about time. the Keurig? Well, we never, we would run out of K-Cups and, like, not buy them. And then, like, I would be like, hey, we need to buy K-Cups. And then Hannah would be like, it's just easier to make a pot of coffee for me. And I'm like, like, how is it not the the opposite of, like, reality? Yeah, because it's, (laughs) yeah, I don't don't know. It's just WWE logic right there. Nothing easier on earth than making one of those. I think she just I used to buy them in bulk at Ross. Costco, dude. Costco. Ross, dude. Dude, how much were they? You'd get, uh, like, the... The thirty pack Costco's a good Are they one. Like various Costco, yeah. I would get Costco Kirkland like Pacific Bold or whatever. Whack a hundred K cups for like thirty bucks. Newman's Own. Yeah, do you? Yeah, know? those were the good Newman's too. Own is the most over Keurig cup there really? is. I've never had that. I'm gonna try it. Newman's you Own, had everything. So tough. My dog's Newman's Own dressing. Yeah. Dude. That's true, you do. You mentioned that last week. Yeah, we have talked about that. Overdressing. Mommy's making a puby salad and she needs some Seth's own dressing. Remember that from Superbad? No, I don't. Dude, I that's a that great movie. A movie. God, you are quote like two thousand two thousands comedy guy. Yeah, me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like every oh, Judd yeah. Apatow film ever, you're the guy who drops those lines. What's funny is I sick like, reference, bro. Your references are off the chain tonight. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny about that is like I kind you're of, a Jonah Hill are character. Gonna, are you gonna drop a kudu tonight? Dude, <laughs> you sound like I'm from London. Dude, kudu was the best. Kudu was the best. Hands down. Yeah. He, like, he's so funny in that movie. Dude, Andrew Man. John still hasn't yeah. seen that movie. No. It's so hard to, like, watch anything that's not, like, wrestling. Like, I can't it's find... It's hard to make time for it. I can't find yeah. two hours that I'm going to watch something that's not wrestling. Yeah, like, I watch that movie. I've gotten so over on wrestling, I can't even bring myself to watch Common Rider episodes because I think to myself, I could be watching a Tanahashi match instead. Well, that's weak because I still watch well, been... Idol Master Cinderella Girls. <laughs> I've been messing with, <laughs> I've been messing with like so many you video get over games. On Cinderella girls. Oh God, you are pretty much such a fucking otaku now. <laughs> this is always the time of the year where I'm like gaming a lot more because like as soon as like the Call of Duty game comes out in November, I'm usually playing video games for a few months after that. And so it's like, like a I've been watching. Yeah, I just watch shit on my iPad while I'm watching games or playing games. Yeah, you so. The you, you invited me to come over at like 9 o'clock at night yeah, to play, play video games, yeah. and I brought all my shit, and I thought we were going to play Call of Duty together or yeah. something, yeah. and I walk into your living room, and you have two TVs set up, mm-hmm. and you're like, no, 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 just hook up to that TV. I meant like, play video games 
like in just, the same room Yeah, together. just hang out. Like, shoot, you know? I thought that was tight. And we sit down and do that, and then immediately you're like, I could be watching The Office, too. I was, well, I'm trying so to... you bring I'm up Netflix watch, yeah. on your iPad. Remember yeah. in, the, in the Pinage when you had, like, that, like, three TV gimmick working? So tight. That was tight. Yeah, dude, that was. I remember that. Okay, like, you... L-Ring brought his yeah. TV over, yeah. and then I brought I the one out of my L-Ring bedroom. Was involved. Yeah, yeah. there was, like, three all in a row. L-Ring had such a gimmick TV, it was, like, a symphonic. <laughs> <laughs> it was, like... It's like a Zenith. Dude. Like, I carried that into the house the other day, and it felt like I was carrying a shoebox. It was so light. Yeah. God. It was so tight. That was fun, though. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, like, watching you yep. play Dark Souls 2 was <laughs> such a gimmick. <laughs> I was laughing at that game for like three days after that. I like, know. I, I had no idea why. You about it. Because, dude, you were just like, you were playing it, and then like you'd hit this guy, and you're like, Fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would like pop when you would like take a guy down with your malice or whatever you were a hitting mace. him with. But no, I was yeah. hitting him with pure malice as well. Like yeah, mace. Yeah, death. that's that gimmick. Fuck, just fuck that game. It's shitty enemy placement and bad hit detection. But I he tells it. me he's like playing this game, and he's like. This game comes with no directions. They don't tell you the controls. It's open world, and you just go do whatever you want. There's like no like, there's no gimmick to there's the gimmick. There's no hand holding whatsoever. Yeah, you were dropped into the middle of kayfabe. And, and it was funny because I like hit you and said you should come over and help me get past this spot on Batman I've been stuck on for a week, and I had already gotten past it by the time you got there. Yeah, but you got over pretty quick. You were here in like ten minutes after nothing you said else yes. to do. I wasn't watching wrestling. Yeah, but you so. live like fifteen minutes away. So you, quick. Yeah, that was tight. I had a good time. We should we should just make that like a, what a gimmick thing. What yeah. were you doing at the, like the exact moment he hit you up? If you weren't watching wrestling, I can't imagine what you were doing. I was shit posting on the internet. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I felt like on poll. No, I was on ASP. <laughs> All right. I felt like I've been trolling people with outlaw wrestling. I felt like uh, the internet outlaw. No. Like, it was, like, setting up Gorilla TV in there, and just, like, having you bring your PS4 over was... It just reminded me, like, the Pinage days when me and Elring would do that all the time, or me and Cam. Like, we'd set up two Xboxes. I love that you called your friend to do the Trash Bandicoot drop. Yeah. That's tight. Did I do that during the podcast? Yes. No, no, you did. Oh, we, that was the week we didn't record, huh? Yeah. Tight. That was sick. Speaking oh, of recording, I guess we should do our intro at some point. We Welcome get to the Put It Over Podcast! Welcome back. Hey. This is the second Arr. show of the year. Yep, it is the second show of the current year. Welcome to the Put em Over Podcast, the most electrifying entertainment yes. out there. That is true. I, that is true. Good. Um, I would like to point something out right away. Tonight, we I had, have... I had a better line there, but I had to keep myself from basically just crapping my pants there, I'm going to be honest. Um... I want to point out that we have some Steve Borden memorabilia right in the forefront of our YouTube channel at this moment. Uh, congratulations to Sting, the legend, the myth. The vigilante. The vigilante. There's the a franchise. lot of things. The stinger. Steve. 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 Yeah. <laughs> uh, going into the Hall of Fame. 2016. All right. I like it. We all kind of called that as soon as he signed with WWE. We kind of knew that that was the whole point was to push him towards the Hall. But uh, it... It sucks because they kind of brought him, they took Steve Borden and they turned him into Steve Jobs in the WWE because that's all he does. 0-2. He's 0-2. Um, I understood him losing to Seth. I don't understand him losing to Triple H. I still can't figure out why they did that. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. And the, the prevailing rumor is still that he was actually supposed to go over. On Seth or Triple? On Seth. Yeah, I And that. they called the audible when they it's realized how yeah. badly... He took that buckle bomb. Yeah, I feel like maybe they wanted to give him the strap one time in the WWE, and he wouldn't have had it for very long. You know, like, potentially that night he might have lost it. Money in the bank? To, uh, yeah, money uh, in the bank cash in. Just a transitional champ, a way to yeah. give him that little brownie button. So he's going yeah. to the Hall of Fame. Uh, it, it's pretty clear. We think that Ric Flair, everyone think, seems to think Ric Flair will be the one inducting him. That's, that's about the only thing that makes sense. Yeah, there's no other really obvious one that sticks yeah. out. I, I thought for a second, I thought maybe Lex Luger, because they they've been buddies since yeah. the 80s, and Lex is having a lot of health problems and all that kind of stuff, and so Steve is such a good guy, I would figure he would be the one to reach out to Lex and give him an opportunity to get back in the in front of the camera and say, hey man, have this special moment with me. But They could get Big Papa Pump. He and Sting were together in the main event Mafia in TNA. They could bring out <laughs> one of those like 
1980s like WCW guys though. Like Big Papa Pump's the only person Vader. that hates Hulk Hogan more get than Vader the WWE. to put him in. Someone like that. That, that could work. Yeah. yeah, him and Vader had some matches, man. The best. But I think Vader might be going in. You think so? That'd yeah, be, that'd be amazing. So you can't really have another inductee induct a duck he's, inductee. He's the right level. Like, because the way they do it, they don't want to put a bunch of like na- like number one right. stars. Yeah. So you got Sting is I don't even think he he might not even be the headliner. He's either he is. number he is. one He's or two. Too big. But like Vader is a good guy to put under there. So because yeah, he was huge everywhere he went. Vader, huge WCW legend yeah. in Japan. Vader going in with Sting side by side with all the matches they had and the run, the title runs that they both had in early WCW is perfect. Yeah, it'd be a because Vader, you're right. He can't headline a cat. He can't headline a class because he just didn't have the. He was bigger in Japan. And if they put Fujinami in, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that Liger, Liger is going to be their foreign guy that they put in. I think I think Liger, with the NXT thing, it's adding up to make yeah. sense. So I think that's. I think with the with the with the way New Japan has grown to the point where WWE is poaching talent from there, they might put in two foreign guys this year. I don't know if they'll do that, but it makes sense to me because the big reason they paid, and apparently that's what Meltzer and a few other sources are reporting, they paid a shit ton to get Nakamura away from New Japan. I think where they're going to have him promoting the launch of the WWE Network in Japan and trying to get that Japanese viewership... Putting in Liger in the Hall of Fame is another nod that they can give Just a bunch Japan. of new Liger matches you'd be able yep. to watch yeah. in Japan on the network. Yeah, and contrary to the fact that Liger got new music when he came to NXT, I really just hope and pray that it's true that the WWE filed for Nakamura's music's trademark. I really hope so because that it's too iconic. It's well, too yeah, good. that and the Liger was like a one-time deal, so they probably didn't want to go through the hassle and his of paying new, for it. So. The music they came up for him was tight. It was, it was tight, yeah. and you got to realize with Liger, it's a little bit different because <laughs> his music is such a gimmick in Japan, dude. It's also not owned by New Japan. It's like an anime cartoon, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Liger's based on an anime hero, so yeah, the they would have had to jump through the Red Power Ranger adjacent. <laughs> So, uh, speaking of Red Power Ranger at Jace, mm-hmm. I want to, I just want to say how, how much I've, I've gone from respecting Tanahashi to wanting to like marry the guy. Yes. The moment I found out he was a common writer, Mark, and then today I shoddily put together my Japanese tweet at him and for him to respond and tell me that his favorite common writer is common writer Kabuto, who is red, therefore Red Power Ranger at Jace. Just the tightest motherfucker on the planet Earth. Like, T-Cat, you, you had the, the wisdom there. Yeah, you I put knew. you on that. You knew. Oh, you mean that he was a common you, fan? Yeah, you, hit him with, you hit him with, like, a Japanese, like, char- character gimmick Yeah, like, tweet. all in hiragana. Hiragana? Yeah. It's one of their alphabets. Tight. Japan, Japanese has two different alphabets. Oh. And did you know that um, L isn't in the Japanese alphabet? That's true. He Neither is V. Oh, okay. Did you know the Japanese language is comprised entirely of syllables? Rather than individual letters, yeah, I knew that. I know everything about Japan. I lo- I love this. In general, both of you guys, you more than you, just because you're starting to get into anime and toku and J-pop and all this weeaboo toku, shit. Toku, what's that again? Tokusatsu, so the live action stuff like Common Rider. I haven't Ultraman. seen much of that. I want to though. You should, because okay. it's tight. And if Tanahashi likes it, you should like it. Yeah, it's that simple. Hmm. Speaking of Tanahashi, on Twitter we reached a milestone this week. We have yes. officially 1,000 followers. And this, I'm going to tweet something about it either tonight or tomorrow, but we're going to give away a shirt. And in my tweet, I'm going to talk about how the way to get the shirt is hidden in this podcast. And I'm going to reveal like the clue right now. So the first person to tweet a picture of Paige to at put him over is going to get a free t-shirt from Pro Wrestling Tees, of their choice. The only way you can get it is tweet any picture of Paige to put them over, right. and the first one that I see, you'll have a f- brand new free t-shirt. I'm, I'm going to do a run-in on this, because I think it'd be this, this is a put them over podcast, so yeah. it can't just be Paige. It has to be one of the favorite chicks of all three of us. So Paige, Veda, or Brie Bella. If you want me to count it, though, you'll probably put Paige. I say Paige, but I would like a shoot picture of Paige not in the ring. I want like a, I want like a tight, like, like non kayfabe picture of Paige. 
Like something funny, like when she was like freaking in that salon on yeah, somebody's leg. Yeah, you could leg. do that, but we don't need a lot of rules. It's just okay. a picture yeah. of her. If you want to choose It that. would be tighter if someone did that, though. Yeah, you'd get more respect, but you could, you'd still get your tea Is no it, what. It's are you going to retweet it as you're part of a part of your page of the day? No, I'm, I'm not going to say that that's what it is. I'm going to say, if you want a free t-shirt, listen to the podcast, and the instructions are in the podcast. I'm not going to say it on the Twitter. Okay, cool. So you're going to have to listen to this to right. hear it to get the shirt. Tight. So. Tight. That's the rule. Pro Wrestling Tees, so. So. A lot of good shirts on there, so if you want one for free. Four, four it's are the, the best shirts. Yeah. If you don't buy shirts from anywhere else but them or Mass Republic. Yeah. For our listeners, I would say we record on Wednesdays, every Wednesday is when we record, and it's usually available via audio by Friday. Is that true? Is that right? Yeah, mostly, yeah. Friday or Saturday? Depends on how much of a scumbag piece yeah. of shit you're yeah. feeling. I, I, One I say, time it was I, Thursday. I say that so that anyone who does listen to this podcast and wants to know if they won the free t-shirt will have to wait until at least, what, next Friday? Because we'll announce it next week on the podcast? Or will we just announce it on Twitter? Well, I'll just tell them if they want it. And okay. Yeah. All right, the I first one I get, I'll respond to. So it's a free shirt from ProWrestlingTees.com. It's very simple. You will be able to pick out whatever shirt you want. You send us the link and your size and your address via direct message. And we will get you the shirt. And you should be excited because Pro Wrestling Tees is the best merch gimmick in the game. You can get so many shirts. Everything's on there. Yes. RPG Vice. Zara. <laughs> you can get I, have, shirt. I have two shirts coming from Pro Wrestling Tees. I would recommend that everyone get over on our podcast. Uh, put us over on Twitter and listen and get in on this. Because God knows when they might take down AJ Styles or club merchandise. You never know if WWE is going to potentially snag the copyrights. And send some kind of bullshit cease and desist to PWT. C and D? Yeah. Yeah, of course it's weak, because it's the WWE. What was the last tight thing that they did? I can I can tell you the last tight thing that they did. On Monday night, oh god. they strapped motherfucking Samurai Del Sol. Mm-hmm. He went over on ADR and we had a and Mascarado strapped in the WWE again with a singles title. With the United States Championship. Yeah. Therefore, a luchador got over in the States. Which, I love, a bunch of people on Twitter put him over. It's like, oh my god, the, are we ever going to have an American U.S. champion? And then I pointed out, he's from Chicago, you fucking marks. And John Cena had it for, like, most of the year. Did you not watch the Open Challenge every week like the Gross. rest of us? Gross. I don't count John but, Cena as an American, though. It was such an amazing moment, and I got so excited, and it took them... 24 hours to fuck it up. The next night at the SmackDown tapings, they've already given the belt right back to ADR. Like, what is the purpose of that? The worst part about that is that the WWE official Twitter account basically announced it today. Do you want to see who what ch- titles changed hands well, before you tune into that. SmackDown? Yeah. That, that's not a bad thing because it drums up interest in SmackDown, which they desperately need to do now that it's on the USA Network again. No, it is bad, but I still would have expected them to do it. Any, but if you're following any WWE related accounts, you're gonna, you're gonna, gonna be ready for that. Like I don't follow any. Yeah, I noticed you unfollowed them from Put Them Over. You have to. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I don't think I've. No, I follow them on Put Them Over. I'm saying. No, but I, I noticed don't, we don't follow them. Oh, you, you mean the you official must, account? You must have unfollowed them because we did follow. I don't them even before. mean. I mean any official WWE account. I wouldn't follow. I wouldn't follow any wrestler in the WWE either. Yeah, I've unfollowed mm-hmm. everyone but Sasha Banks and William Regal. Because they're just too out there with it. I, like, I don't yeah. care. Like NX, the NXT account does it too. Yeah. The NXT account, they uh, not only did they kind of do like a half spoiler, like SmackDown. The NXT Twitter announced that Carmella won the Royal Rumble, like, when they taped it, like, two weeks ago. Like, the official account said, this just in, Carmella wins the R- Rumble to become the number one contender, like, two weeks ago. They seriously did that? That's so crazy that I did not see that spoiler for Same. two weeks. Yeah. Oh, it was all over. Because I follow so many wrestling news sites on Facebook that spoil shit all the time. I'm just, like, I'm done with trying to not see spoilers because some of the stuff they do post is funny and and entertaining. That's why I don't... I made it a rule. I don't want to follow anyone that talks about the WWE at all. That's good. That's a good rule. Just truly bury them. I I hate even bringing them up, but it is tight that tonight on NXT, we got to see Ciampa go over in a singles match, so I think he's going to get a good push 
That was tough. And then that battle royale, I mean, the match itself wasn't that great, but it was really cool <laughs> that they they let every single one of those stars cut a little promo to lead into. I'm just, it. I'm thinking of NXT, and I'm thinking about the like the moment when Baron Corbin's music hit when Joe was cutting that promo on Sammy, just and you did all, exactly that. Took all the energy out of the arena, dude. And then, and then when the Ascensions like uh, oh like Titan Tron video came up, that was so tight. He hates that like intro. I hate it Dude. so much. The first time it happened, like, I cried of laughter. Like, he was so Because I never really <laughs> noticed it before. He's like, what the fuck is this gimmick? They're going to go to Throne of Anguish wrestling promotion, dude. <laughs> what killed me, though, is I knew it was coming tonight. And I braced myself and I thought, they're going to have that stupid Illuminati bullshit in the pyramid, whatever, I'm prepared. But then it flashes up with, like, you the Mayan yeah, you... temple, and I forgot that. <laughs> and just started dying again. There's no way you can prepare for it. God. As much as you it try, will, it'll get you. Fucking edgelords. Do you put over Apocalypto? I've never actually seen that. So good. I, do, really I put over Gibson, movie. though. Super, in general. Apocalypto is a super Mel. underrated r- movie. Super. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, Most of his it. movies are pretty underrated. It made me think of it when he said the Mayan temple, because it's, like, a big part of that movie. <laughs> So, yeah. anyway, yeah. I, I thought NXT actually was a pretty decent show tonight for how bad it was at the end of 2015. They were really, really having a struggle there. I, I think overall they've struggled a lot since Dusty died, minus TakeOver Brooklyn. That was, like, the only really, really good thing they had. And the next TakeOver where Bailey had the rematch with Sasha. That was good. Respect? Yeah, that was good. I always forget because they always have such a gimmick. London was pretty game. weak. London, London was weak. sucked. It didn't suck, but it was so weak compared to its two predecessors. Dude, London? In fact, it's four predecessors. It was the weakest takeover of the year. I would go out on a limb saying Enzo and Cass were more over in London than they were when they popped the crowd in Brooklyn for that dark match when that, they were the first the, ones to come London out. That London crowd was over, that's why. Yeah. They made it tight, but the matches themselves weren't great. Remember when Enzo was like, if we had a pound for every time we got our butts kicked when we were kids, we'd have zero, zero pounds! pounds. <laughs> <laughs> that was so tight. Uh, and I love they got... The NXT Tag Team of the Year Award for 2015. For not being strapped one time. <laughs> but the company for which they work won't recognize them officially like that. Well, you do it's realize... It's up to the fans to tell them, hey, dumbasses, these guys are golden. This is what's funny about the difference between that, because it seems like the NXT fans get it. But the WWE fans gave Tag Team of the Year to the Usos, which were out of action for 10 months. Terrible. Or 8 months. Yeah, and I, I, I don't hate the Usos. I mean, well, they're right, all right. But they, they didn't perform. At, at least in that they have year. a cool. The weirdest gimmick. thing about that is not only were they out eight months, they're like pretty. They're good, but they're kind of average when they're even healthy. Yeah, it'd be one thing if like if like Seth Rollins yeah, wins if, it because he's everybody loves him. But who do people got love the Usos? And he he was injured, but towards the end of the year, he so still put in work. But who? say he was injured the same amount, it would make sense for him to win because of how good he is. Who but. won that? Who won that that award in 2014 when the Usos were champs like the whole entire year? The tag was, team of the year. It was Usos yeah. again, probably. Then. Well, did they yeah. win it back to yeah, back? Yeah, they put them over for winning it twice. Yeah, they mentioned that. It was, it was the totally slammies were so kinked. It's so stupid. I've been wanted. I've been want, I wanted to talk about this anyway. That's a perfect segue, and I want anyone who's listening make sure to check out our Twitter at Put Him Over and on my Twitter as well at Lucha John. I personally hate Change.org. It's got some of the faggiest petitions ever. There's only been I. I only get notifications from Change.org because I signed up for the petition to name that airport up in Canada the Stu Hart International Airport. <laughs> Like, that's important shit. Uh, give you I that might one. vote on your change.org gimmick now just because you said that. <laughs> so change.org has a pretty cool petition. It's up to 500 signatures. And what it is, is it's a petition to send a letter to Vince McMahon to change the schedules for the workers in WWE. These guys work over 300 nights a year. Yeah. And the reason this is so big is not because these guys need a break necessarily, but it's why the product is so bad. The easiest way to get an injury is not to do a high-risk match. It's to do way too many matches of any caliber. Because these guys get injured and because they're so overworked, that's why we have mandated move sets, banned moves, low work rates, boring slow matches. 
a tired roster of guys that just we get bored of them because we see them too much. Right. Having us pull back and let these guys rest will ensure they can start having better matches. They can start putting over more talent and diversifying their roster. It, it's such a win-win because look at New Japan. They put on the best traditional style matches in the world. And their guys wrestle into their 60s. And they also... Let's compare. WWE 2015. Tyson Kidd. Um, Dana Brooke. Seth Rollins. Help me out here. Who else? Are we talking about injuries? Yes. Uh, John, Jay Uso. John Cena. John Cena. Cesaro. Cesaro. Uh, that turned out not to be oh, true. Oh, is it totally fake? Um, there was so or many Nikki Bella reports. briefly. Orton. Who's that guy that was the announcer on NXT? His name... Corey Graves? No. Um, oh, he Al feuded... Alex... Alex Riley. Riley, yeah. Alex Riley. Um, Kenta. Sami Zayn. All these guys injured. Everyone Almost... that won a champ left WrestleMania 31 as a champion is injured and not available for WrestleMania yeah, Rusev 32. Rusev was injured for a while. He's not available for WrestleMania 30, but he didn't leave that as a champion. He lost his but that's it's just you reminded me another right. guy. There's oh, right. there's like Paige is hurt right now. Nikki Bella's hurt. She is. Yeah. Jeez. So there's Paige has a concussion. She'll like be 15 she'll be back. plus. Well, she hasn't been on for like three weeks. I'm that hurt. People get sloppy and they get just crappy in the ring because they're so tired from being so overworked. Did you say Hideo Itami? Yeah, Kenta. Yeah. Now compare that to New <laughs> Japan. Ibushi won. Right. They had one major injury. That's because that Nakamura kicked the shit out of him at Wrestle Kingdom 9. Yeah. Killed him for a year. <laughs> it wasn't until November he got injured. Doesn't but most, of the, most of the guys... Was he like Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star? Like dude, a delayed injury? Dude, Nakamura's the king, dude. Well, most of the guys in New Japan are shit, older, dude. too. You got guys like Tanahashi, who in WWE would be considered like super old. Yeah. They don't even get hurt in New Japan. You've got guys Here. like Sakuraba, so, Fujiwara, Liger, yeah. guys who are in their 50s and 60s coming out and stiffing the shit out of when each you, other. When you posted that, I was like, just out of print, it already had like 463 signatures or something like that, so I knew it was going to get 500. But just out of principle, the fact that Vince McMahon's not going to listen to shit. Oh, 500 just, was the goal? Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's the first milestone. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I just, I just knew that. Like, well, I didn't read. What does it have? Is it just saying more time off, or does it have like a detail? It does have some detail, but I wish you would post something that would say like "fire that fag backstage that you hate." Kevin Dunn. Yeah. Just kill him. Just kill him. <laughs> because I've Die always, in a fire. I've always thought the best way to do that would be like a rotating, like off season. Is that what they described? Where like a either, either an off season or heaven forbid. The problem with WWE is they put all their eggs in one basket. They have this tiny roster of protected guys that they actually push. And so instead of putting over a large group of guys to where you can swap each week, they just have this one group that they just run into one, the ground. One, one sixth of the roster should have, be on a two month off season throughout the month, throughout the year, I mean. So, like, at all points, you're using five-sixths of your talent, and one-sixth is taking a two-month off-season. And then they come back, and then a different one-sixth goes off. I wouldn't even think you necessarily need to Just give them rotate, that dude. much time. Just cut their cut their weeks in half. I think Instead of five to six shows, why not just three to four shows? It's not going to Because you can run happen, the same dude. shows, you can make the same amount of money, you just are bringing less people. So the people are get their two months, uh, just like football, works, basketball, works. baseball. Just something. Vince, Vince is convinced that he has to have all these people at these shows to make money, though. I want to point out... He has to advertise them for those cities where he won't make money. Because you look at just the injury rate in the industry and how much higher WWE's is, and the one thing that WWE does differently is just how overworked their guys are. Sami Zayn as El Generico had never had a major injury that put him out for several months. And he did matches like the latter war at Final Battle with Steen, which was insanely brutal. <laughs> the shittiest thing about his injury is that like a non-wrestling move is what hurts him. He keeps doing he that. Just, he, he gets so into The it, degradation of yeah. working... Yeah. And he was on NXT, which is nowhere near as bad as main roster. Point being is he went so long doing these crazy high-risk matches, no injuries. I Goes to WWE... Injured. I think like the choreographed nature of WWE, like compared to New Japan, 
is part of it because they got to think the things they do, they don't just go out and wrestle like they do in New Japan. They're always thinking of shit in the back of their mind how, like, do this move, I got to do it this way. New Japan, they just go out and just tear people apart. Yeah, they don't they never get hurt. They don't. They pick spots, I think, in indies, but they don't pick like the. They don't choreograph the entire match. Uh, depends. Like PWG, that yeah. stuff is so spot heavy. You have. Well, to I mean, less of the of spots out. and and more of they're always in the back of their mind thinking like they have to do something like a certain way. Exactly. They improvise everything in WWE except for a big spot, which is why the match well, is so boring. But they know. I have to be safe, and I have yeah. to pander to that camera at that moment. Ric Flair talked about that on, on his podcast one time. I think he talked about how, like, there were certain guys like Sting and certain guys, like, in the early, early days, like Harley Race and all those guys. People that he wrestled so many times that he could do it with his eyes closed, and they'd wrestle the same match every single time, and they would get over in every single city they went to. And there would only be, like, one or two fans that would be, like, why do you guys pull the same moves every time? And his response to that was always like, listen, man, if you come to a show and you don't see me like do my little flip over the turnbuckle. Yeah, you got to hit the greatest be, hits. Yeah, you yeah. have to hit the greatest hits. And, and like you're like the only one that comes to so many shows that you care. Like most people are in one show, one city, and TV wasn't bi as big back then. You know, That's I mean? the so. huge difference between the biz then and the biz now it's and TV. the new challenge. Yeah. Before, guys were dying for exposure. Because getting on TV was almost unheard of. Right. Very few times you'd get on TV. Very few promotions were televised. You were putting... It's the same with stand-up comedy. You would just be doing shows. You wouldn't have a Netflix special. Right. But now, the threat that's posed against all these guys is getting overexposed. Especially in WWE, if you're on... Smackdown, if you're on Raw, yeah. if you're on network stuff, you're just everywhere. Rick, you can be on the internet. Somebody like Ric Flair would tour the country and actually do like one match. Do a match here, then go to another city, do the same match. Go to another city, do the same match. And it would mm -hmm. work because he was doing it to new crowds. Same mm -hmm. thing with stand-up comedy. Like back, yeah. back then, you could write like 30 minutes of comedy and tour the whole country off that 30 minutes of comedy and like there were, get over yeah, it doesn't end up There were guys too. who would write an hour and use that same hour for a decade. Yeah. But you can't do that anymore. Not in the era of on demand. Because that's, that's the big thing. Not only are you yeah. on the internet and you're on TV, people can watch, they can review tape. They can look at your catalog of matches. What I don't and understand view. is yesterday I spent like over three hours watching Nakamura matches. And there was a ton of, like, similar spots, and I got worked in every single match. And, like, what I don't understand is how the WWE can't figure out a way to, like, adjust to the on-demand thing when they're the on-demand company. Like, they have the network. The problem is, it's, like, it's their creative, their booking, was, they just don't... I was talking to Suplex City today, and I was, I was saying, like, here's what I think needs to happen. They moved, I think they moved, like, it would be cool if they moved... Smackdown back to USA just to build it up and get it back on that channel. But eventually, I think it would be cool if they did the brand split. Everyone thinks that. Brought back that belt, right? That'll never right. happen. Right. Brought back the big belt, okay? Brand split. And then uh, I think Smackdown should become a network exclusive show. Okay, that, yeah, but you got to stop thinking that like WWE is trying to like. Make tight. what's going on right now better. I know I'm working, could, I'm working myself. Because know. they they know how to put stuff out that people like. And they know how to make put a great show. They're going out of their way not to. Everything they're doing is on purpose. They know how to put on like a sh legit Dude, show. Be so By the way, I loved last week when John Cena was announcing his injury and saying, I can't fight you on SmackDown ADR. I can't fight you for that title. But I'm going to bring someone out who can. And of course... He puts him over in a promo and then has to say Kalisto. Again, just every single time. Can't have a pop. Not to Can't. mention, WWE, if if what Steph and Vince said on Monday is to be believed, we've now seen everyone who's going to be entering the Royal Rumble. No, that actually, I was going to tell you earlier when you were talking about that. Suplex City told me today, because I was complaining about that today, and he told me that's actually not true. There's only about 12 people who are actual entrants in... <sighs> Chris Jericho well, yeah, is like that, the biggest If I had to fucking so see like Heath Slater. Well, I mean, every, every year, you know, like, with 100% certainty, who about 25 of the 
people are. Yeah, it's like, always that last five that are going to be surprises. There's five to eight surprises yeah. every year, yeah. Well, yeah. So, let's uh, like DDP was a surprise. One of the Dudley Boys was a big surprise last week, last year. Let's 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 move on from WWE. I yeah, think we spent, we've so spent a lot time. of time on it. But I'm glad that we're getting over on New Japan World, oh and because we've got fantastic coming up for that. Daily motion for me yesterday. I was just like nice. Nakamura City all day, dude. Love. Let's talk some of the Japanese talent because. Oh, I finally watched. WWE's obviously paying attention to New Japan. They want to pull some guys. Yeah, I actually have a. Who do you think? I have a Twitter question about that, so we'll answer that for one of our fans. Uh, we have a question from at underscore the angry ginger. <laughs> I love that guy, and he wants to know: Is he Sheamus? Will the WWE properly handle the Bullet Club slash Nakamura when they come in? You ready? So this guys? is his question. One, <laughs> two, three. No. no. <laughs> Impossible. The chances of that happening are as good as the chances of you enjoying the Royal Rumble, Angry Ginger. Might happen. You never know. Yeah. That's the thing is the Royal Rumble is the one event where you could possibly still really enjoy that event. Here's my problem is I don't think we're going to get a lot of pops of like cool, like Hacksaw Jim Duggan's not going to run in because it's for Roman's belt. They're not going to even waste time with that. They will. I hope so. No, they will. They I'd rather it. see Hacksaw Jim Duggan they come out in his the rumble geriatric flab and get a ho pop yes. than anything else of the night. That's going to be sweet. Hacksaw is one of the cheapest pops WWE has. I hope, like, everyone will I hope Liger's him. an entrant. That'd be tight. That'd be what, tight. Be. what about if AJ Styles is? Okay, but we, we, were, that, we were... By the way, that stands. Track. Anyone so, listening? Last week, Hurley issued a challenge... That if AJ Styles, he thinks AJ Styles is going to debut at the Royal Rumble. If he doesn't, I get to go home with this totally sweet Bucks doing a Meltzer driver at there's a the stip- hall. There's a stip- 308. Hey, there's a stipulation on that. What? You get to go home with that, but you have to bring it to Gorilla every single week. Every, I will drink rum pulpe out of it this every single It should not leave time. your car at any moment. But if AJ Styles does the unthinkable, and WWE actually does something cool, I'm going to unmask on air on this show. It's it's mask versus cut match. Yeah. That's that's huge stakes. That, that's how much I value anything with the Young Dude, Bucks on it. Two marks, one cut, bro. <laughs> Too sweet. <laughs> Too sweet, one <laughs> cut. Sounds pretty good. We're going to fill... We'll fill it with, like, chocolate soft serve ice cream, too. Just get some like some of that milkshake. gimmick chocolate mousse that's oh, in the buffet at KFC. Oh, dude. I've been really going really hard on chocolate milk lately. Like, I love, love like a chocolate half, milk. That's the only reason I would ever go to Hometown Buffet, because you get unlimited yeah, chocolate, chocolate, chocolate milk. milk. I, miss, I miss Hometown Buffet. I don't the other day, I, walk, I, I, I walked into Staples yes, the other day, and it's in where Hometown Buffet yeah. used to be, and I thought of chocolate milk, and, and I thought wept. of mac and cheese. You wept openly? Yeah, I thought and of the, mac and, and cheese. And the sliced ham. Yes! Like the roast beef, dude, on Saturday nights. That was great. Oh, are we going to talk food? We were going to talk we're, some We're going gimmicks, to, right? but I, I want oh, to say, like, that's how much I value something with the Bucks on it, because the Bucks are... I'm going to throw it out there. The, the best tag team in professional wrestling Anything today, Bucks related is going to be good merch. I can't imagine how much of a piece of shit you'd have to be to shoot on the Bucks. Yeah. How about you like, an example? I'm, I'm trying to think of someone so out of touch with reality, so unrefined in their taste, so stuck in their ways, and so clueless and plebeian that you'd have to be just a cut plebeian. and a half to shoot on the Bucks. I, I'm just going to... Uh, how about Jim Cornette? Yeah, that guy. Yeah. I want to go on record. Fuck you, Jim Cornette. You're yeah. a piece of shit that's completely irrelevant. And the fact that you still cling to this mindset of don't expose the business, shooting on the bucks for doing hilarious things like selling to a kid Super or being over Santa the top. Claus. Yeah, shit like that. Yeah. Everyone knows wrestling is scripted. And the only way you're ever going to win over people who say, mm, wrestling's fucking fake. Is if you show them tight things. If you show them things like Joey Ryan throwing people with his dick. Yeah. Do you have any idea how many normies and casuals I've seen on Facebook put that over? They'll say, check out this funny right, WWE dude. video. They don't even know what it is. Yeah. But they think it's tight that someone threw someone with their dick. And for someone like Jim Cornette, who's such a fucking uneducated lib cuck piece of shit, that doesn't <laughs> even have an expansive enough vocabulary or intellect to do anything but refer to people as children. He can't actually... That's the 
just classic social justice libcuck thing to do is just constantly go to the same thing. He's the equivalent of Trudeau constantly just using the defense. It's 2015. Yeah, he throws out the children and then he blocks you. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, and then the guy that was like cut. going, I'm not even going to mention that fag's name that was going in on him to, or going in on us today to try to protect. Jim I will. Um, anyone who's listening who's tight and has taste, uh, which is everyone. Cause yeah, if you're, if listen, you listen to if you're listening to this, you made an effort to be tight. That's right. Uh, at Razor Cabron, with an E on the end, which is not how Cabron is spelled, you fucking white piece of shit. Go go shoot on him, because he's just a blind cornet follower, and was shooting on Joey Ryan. And if you don't like Joey <laughs> Ryan, you don't like wrestling, please leave my planet. I don't dude, want you using up my precious oxygen. Dude, when Joey Ryan tweeted that thing about, dude, I flip people with my dick, if you can't buy that, or if you buy Irish whips and you can't buy that... <laughs> You're wrong or something like that. Like, my tweet to him, I responded to that tweet, and I said, no matter the competition, flipping people with your dick is the winner. Yeah. <laughs> like, you need to... Im- this idea that you need... WWE does it and it's terrible, and all these old... old guard guys, they think that you need to not expose the business, protect kayfabe, and put forth this facade of realism, and that's not the point. It's violent vaudeville. Be entertaining. Be flashy. Be silly. Life is, a, life is a work, and kayfabe is what you make it. Yeah. In your mind, <laughs> like we make our we make our own reality, and my reality is I enjoy tight things that I know are supposed to be kayfabe, and I don't look the other way on them and like turn my shoulder to them because at the end nothing of the day, is exposed to me. Wrestling is a performance art, and it's part of the entertainment industry. No one watches the Flash and goes, <laughs> I. Dude, it I turns choose. out Grant Gustin, he can't actually run so fast that he goes back in time. I what choose fuck, man? I choose what I want to like buy and sell in kayfabe. Like I don't buy Roman Reigns as this like one versus all like champion for I the people. I don't buy him. You know, but I like I buy oh, dude, that Razor Cabron guy just tweeted at me. Let's look at this bag <laughs> Oh my god, he just said snore again. <laughs> Remember the guy yesterday said cringe a couple of times? I was like, did you actually cringe? <laughs> god, dude. So yeah, uh, I choose what to buy and sell in kayfabe, man. Like I buy that Joey Ryan's just a total sleaze ball and all that kind of stuff. And his dick funny? is that mighty. Yeah, How can you funny. hate life so much that you hate the Young Bucks, Joey Ryan, and, and Steen? Kevin Steen, and Lucha Underground, and Lucha Underground? Like, what are you alive for? How do, how do you have that fucking? Those per- are the best things. Just the cosmic alignment of the stars of shitty taste on that. Yeah, that's pretty... it's like this winter solstice of being a. Fuck Tom. And he retweets Bernie Sanders all day. Oh my god. You mean the guy who legitimately tweeted, a guy who thinks that he can run the free world, asked, uh, it doesn't make sense to me that student loans have a higher interest rate than house and car loans. And then everyone had to point out, uh, do you know what the difference between an unsecured and secured loan are? No, do you understand basic care. high school economy class? No, dude, it's 2016. It's the current year. It's the current year. God. Hate Jim Cornette. They're Jim coming Cornette. for our guns. <laughs> Come. Unfortunately, I don't think Obama's coming for our guns, but WWE's coming for our bullet club. Yeah. Wow. So let's move on from let's move on from topics that piss us off to a topic that we really, really are yeah, excited about. I want to talk, talk about. about this. Yeah, bring it up. Tell me what you want to talk about. Tonight. I want to talk about one of the best promotions in the world. In the gimmick world. And that's hot delis. Hot delis. Like, you know what I'm talking about. You're at a liquor store and they've got just a crappy glass display oh. of deep fat fried yeah. shit wrapped in tin foil. At a liquor store. Yeah. 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 I've never seen one. There was a, a gimmick. Store before. There was a gimmick where I grew up. There was like a little town called Fort Dick. It's got like a fire. <laughs> yeah. It's got like a fire station. It's got a school in it and like a couple other little things. But there's Fort Dick Market. And that is, like, right by the prison. So, like, all the guys, all the, like, correctional officers, they all get their coffee and their breakfast gimmicks and their after sh- after work after gimmicks. work gimmicks at Fort Dick Market. And they have, like, the best deli in Del Norte County. Like, the best. Dude, I was super over it. It's not as good anymore, but the Lolita Market down the street from where I grew up, they had the best gimmicks it's one of my favorite. It's not. It's not very common anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lolita had one of the best. Mm-hmm. I love 
when they've got those shitty cheeseburgers. Oh, the, they're like, like yeah. that plastic cheese. Dude, AMPM has hella good cheeseburgers. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Just that shitty cheese and it's wrapped in that gimmick tinfoil. Yes. Love those. Yeah, the tinfoil paper stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What What, what are your primary gimmicks? First of all, there are, I have a couple of buddies from high school who are res- kind of wrestling marks that might or might not listen to this podcast. They say they listen from time to time. And I'm going to call out one of them. Zach, you totally know what I'm talking about. Walk into Pacific Market and get in the pizza pocket at when we were going to Crescent Elk. God, I'm going to see if Zach well, listens to well, this you just and tells on me pizza that. pizza pocket because this guy was just burying like, pizza pockets. Pizza, like, no, the stupid. pizza, like the good pizza pockets with like a ton of mozzarella cheese in them that like is super, super stringy and like the little sausage balls. So, so good. Cat, what's, what's your pizza hot deli gimmick? Um, I don't know. It's, it's... Chicken it's, the af- it's the afternoon, you just slept in hella late, you're in your pajamas, you're just gonna sit at home and like watch shit, and you've walked down to your local shitty market with a hot deli, yeah. what is the cheap, unhealthy food that you're gonna binge on? I'm getting some mac and cheese, I'm getting some... We put over the Safeway mac and cheese in particular. Lo- yes. I'm I'm Safeway some... is the best big chain hot deli out yes. this side of 7-Eleven. Yes. Yes. I'm getting potato wedges and I'm getting chicken strips. I like... Potato wedges are good, but I like the tater babies, the smaller, little yeah. crispier yeah. ones. Because okay. the big ass wedges like, are sometimes like too that, much uh, potato. The ones at Angelo's, is that what you're talking about? No, like, you know, like when you get like the big wedges and sometimes yeah. the potato isn't cooked all the way. Oh, yeah. no, yeah. I'm talking about <laughs> yeah, the yeah, little ones. The ones. Are <laughs> hey, they're called tater <laughs> babies. Hella good. Yeah. Here's the question this is going to be a big divisive one. This is as bad as like Moon House and Bouncy Castle. Do you call them Mojos or Jojos? Jojos. Jojos. I call them Mojo, so you guys are fags. No, you're the only person I've ever heard say that in the Tons world. Tons of people call them Mojo. No, okay, so I'm going to drop one that you guys will probably pop for. Barbecue beef burrito. That... Like, with the sliced beef? Yeah, with, like, the pulled... No, the it's, pulled like, sliced little, pork. like, silver dollar slices of, pe- of oh, beef. Oh, I thought you meant the ones Thins... that are no, like, it's... pulled pork style. No, 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 because no. he hates shredded meat, so I yeah. knew he wouldn't pop for that. Yeah. I'm talking about they're, like, thin-sliced roast beef. So just doused in barbecue sauce and deep fried. And it's a burrito. God, it's or amazing. a bean and cheese burrito. But That's amazing. The bar, I would I've always get I've never rocked a burrito at like a deli like that before. I used to get them because at when like in high school when you'd go to the hot deli, like if you only had a few bucks on you, the burritos were tight because they were like two for a dollar because they were little tiny burritos. See, this thing, they're always cheap and you yeah. can have just like a cornucopia of deep fried shit. That's like a corn dog. Well, yeah, that's like also another thing is like a buck a piece. Pizza sticks are two for I've a buck. Got, I've Egg got two roll. primary gimmicks that i always get one is super normy but i will always pop for them and that's chicken strips i I'm was just gonna say big flanks of chicken chicken strips, strips. Call them normy. chicken Come strips on. are like the holy grail of the deli yeah. hot case and, you and they're have, expensive and you get fucking ranch and you tear yes. it into bits and dip yeah them in it. it's nirvana yeah because they don't fit in the ranch cup you have to rip it to shreds yeah. to get it yeah i get over when they have like mozzarella sticks my other one, if they and have th- them, which this, is rare, is the, but... this is the sleeper hit, because most people will go for egg rolls or actual burritos. I'm about Crispitos. Those... Why is that a sleeper? Those are hella good. If I see them, I get them. Because a lot of people don't put them. them over. They're that gimmick taquito Dude. that's really long and always filled with hella cheese Dude. and chicken. Have you ever been to like... You put over tornadoes at like 7-Eleven? I was just bringing that up. <laughs> at Circle oh, K, too sweet? Like the chicken and pepper jack tornado? Oh, oh, so oh, yes. good? Like the Santa Fe dude, Southwestern. I the, dude, I used to get those at Circle K all the time. Love Circle Girl. Dude, there was another one that was so good. It was like a corn dog with a with a it was like a foot long thing, and it was like a corn dog with a chili cheese gimmick inside the corn dog. <laughs> I love being a fat American. No, it's, it's so great, tight. Dude. What about, what about cold delis? You guys, I, they're yeah. obviously not as tight or sleazy and scummy, but dude, like in an airport, I've totally rocked like a um like a turkey sandwich out of like a vending machine before it's tight yeah like on a, yeah it's, I like it's good the, they're like fresh and delicious the gimmick salads like max sal oh yeah you can get some weird three bean shits dude are you, you gonna put over carrot salad? and raisin salad because yeah, i'm gonna bury it carrot raisin salad is a tight gimmick but you'll never find that in so a deli that's gross. a home that is a baptist potluck gimmick no you'll find that in like a store in rio del like i was talking oh, about earlier God. you would find that in like a backwoods store yeah and a crack pipe just laying in the middle of the aisle it's true gross dude jojo's you said jojo's and the mac and cheese safeway in particular yeah. mac and cheese um 
I never really rocked pizza sticks because they don't have enough pizza gimmick inside them. It's like too much, too much of the actual. I like the crust, crust that they put on those. Yeah, but it's too much of that and not enough pizza and pepperoni and stuff. That's true. Yeah. It's just kind of a sauce in there, like a pepperoni sauce. Dude, the last time I got food out of a hot case, I got mac and cheese, and I got like the, like the little popcorn chicken that are like Southwest Asian sauce. Like they're like it tasted like a Chinese food. It was so good. I love when you go to a place and they have some kind of chicken gimmick, like Chester's chicken. God, at a Chester's gas station. chicken is good. You can get full on just yeah, fried just like chicken, chicken or like tenders. giant gimmicky. Yeah. Chicken strips that are shaped like a fucking sea urchin. Yeah, they're like look like a seahorse. It's like this horrible, deformed life form that's been deep fat fried, but it's some kind of tight, spicy Cajun chicken or something. Like Fresh Freeze, that gimmick burger place here in town, they have tight, deep fried mini tacos that L Ring always gets over on. I'm a big mark for deep fried mushrooms at any kind of. You got those when we went to Fresh Freeze. Every time. Every time. Yeah, deli hot deli cases are tight, dude. Not as tight as breakfast for dinner, but nothing is. Nothing is. Yeah. You know what's not tight? What? E.T., the extraterrestrial. Oh, are we going to are we gonna shoot on movies now? Let's, let's shoot. Okay. Let's shoot on them. So I had this idea. I was reading, like, I read one of those gimmick lists of, like, ranking Steven Spielberg's movies from, from worst to first. And, like, the thing that pissed me off about the list was that Hook was, like, number 27 out of 29 movies or something Such like that. Stick. Which is stupid. I don't understand... This is the first time in my entire life, and that movie came out in like 1991, first time in my life that I've ever heard any reports that people don't like Hook. I always how, thought how that was... How did you avoid an, that? Tons of people shoot on Hook. I'd have never, I've never, I guess the people around me have never shot on that. Like, I've never you, you seen... You only associate with tight people, obviously. Yeah, I've T-Cat never seen anyone right? hate on Hook. Hook's well, a hell of a good movie. Get this, dude. There are people so faggy that they don't like the Young Bucks or Joey Ryan. So That's there are true. people. Who Jim don't Cornette like probably shoots on Hook. Yeah, yeah. probably the same people. Yeah. Okay. If, if it's tight. All right. So if it if if it's tight, Jim Cornette doesn't like it. That's just like the way I'm gonna live the rest of my life. Unless it's like a man's asshole. That's true. Faggy. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Um, you know what's funny about you on Twitter is that you, like, always call people out for their, like, grammar and punctuations, <laughs> but you misspell faggot on purpose, and no one ever gets back at you for it. Like, I've never seen anyone shoot on you for spelling faggot wrong, and it's funny to me, because we spell it a certain way. True. Yeah. I think, I think it's a commonly accepted, ironic misspelling. Yeah. Right. I've never seen it anywhere except for you. Yeah. Really? Uh. Big it. <laughs> well, I live on the internet, so I see some. Okay, things. so we're gonna shoot on movies. We're gonna give. Up. I, I figured, hey, let's do a list gimmick, a short one. We'll just. I think it's just, just more of a here. discussion. More All of a right. discussion. Throw out some movies that you find that are completely overrated. I can. I can kick. Do you want to kick it off? I think the ultimate one is ET. Of course, it's because e. like ET sucks. Like. I hate that movie. I can't even get through it. It's that boring. The only tight thing that I liked about E.T. E. when I was a kid was the fact that it was filmed where I grew up. There was a part of it that was filmed I'm, where I grew up, and I camped in that very The spot. anniversary edition is even worse because Spielberg edited in to where the, uh, the agents are holding flashlights instead of guns to make it less scary. So he made he let George Lucas Yeah, he, he lucas it. Yeah. Okay, so E.T. is like my one of my number, probably my number one. Just throw out your three. Let's not make an official yeah, list. Yeah, What's your yeah. three? Obviously, that's on there. The Matrix. Fuck you. I hate the, the Matrix. Matrix. Tight. You're a faggot. I hate the Matrix. That's because you're a plebe. You, you don't, don't even have... like the Lord of the Rings trilogy, so suck a dick. Yeah, I don't have any time to even like... No. Remember, I did tell you that part of the stipulation for this list is that you have to have seen the movie yourself. I know, but I'm saying I've it. never even I've never even taken the time to put over Lord of the Rings because I'm just not into that entire storyline. I've seen the Twin Towers or the Two Towers or whatever uh, it's called. Well, that's the worst one. And so. I saw that just because I was at the drive-in with some friends. I'm so and sad showed... that you only saw the shitty one. You need to watch the other two. No, I don't care. I don't care. I didn't read the books when I was a kid. And I don't care. Yeah, that's I don't so like the Matrix. I thought you hated the Matrix. Yeah. I wasn't big on the second and third one because no one is. But I thought, yeah, nobody is. I thought you thought the Matrix was overrated. What are, What are your thoughts on Trinity? And I don't mean Naomi. I mean Blade Trinity. <laughs> I don't mean that either. Dude, the first Blade was tight. I like all three. 
Really? Most like, people hate him. But the, two, no, the first one was the best. Two's the, no, two's the best because Guillermo del Toro directed it. Oh, that's true. What about, and Ron what about Triple H being in Blade? That's tight. Yeah. yeah. I forgot all about that. And part. Parker Posey. And Ryan Reynolds. Did you know Ryan Reynolds in that? was originally cast to play Deadpool in that movie until uh, they realized they didn't have the rights to put Deadpool in the Blade movie, so they just switched him to being Hannibal King. Who's Parker Posey? She's an actress. She's tight. She's hot. So what are, your, yeah. what are your other overrated movies? I've got a top three because I prepared the list gimmick. Yeah. Uh, Avatar. <laughs> oh, my God. What a fucking normie piece of shit. Hated I that cannot movie. believe the amount of money that raked in. Anyone impressed by that movie? I remember people saying, I just couldn't believe it. I want to live on Pandora. <laughs> they had floating islands. Like, motherfucker, I've played JRPGs for 20 years. Dude, Play any Final Fantasy and you'll see cooler shit. I saw floating islands on fucking Super Nintendo on Chrono Trigger. Get with it, Normie. Dude, that movie, like... <laughs> Here's my opinion on that movie. It's Fern Gully? I was impressed for two minutes, and then I was like, okay, the colors look nice. I'm done. Because I, at that point, you hadn't seen anything that vibrant before. So if you watch it on Blu-ray like I did when it first came out on Blu-ray, I was like, I've okay. I've watched anime, so yes, I have. Well, I'm just saying. like, just, To me, it, it feels like... Uh, I'm trying to think of a, a good equivalent. Just, People, something that got over because it's the first basic taste of something that someone's ever gotten. Mm -hmm. Like, apparently, no one had ever seen sci-fi fantasy before, and that just blew up. Like, oh my god! No, that that movie is terrible. That was a good call. Because I've talked about how overrated it, that movie is. Before, it's not even I a terrible it. movie. It's it's a decent movie. So but good. to to have become the number one earning film of all time, give oh, me a fucking break. It's stupid. I hate that movie. What kills me is the top two movies of all time at one point were two films from one of my favorite directors, but they're his two worst films. Titanic? Yeah. I like Titanic. I worship James Cameron for Aliens, Terminator 1 and 2, and The Abyss. Like, as a little kid, I loved The Abyss so much, I named... (laughs) The Monster? I named my pet turtle Virgil after Ed Harris's character in that Mm. movie. Love James Cameron, but fuck Avatar, fuck Titanic. I that's, like Titanic. I think Titanic's not a bad movie. I don't want. I'm gonna. No, I don't. I don't. Like it. That's a good movie. Yeah. But it definitely doesn't deserve that praise. No, it's no, no, no. I, I, but I remember when it was like the thing, and I know why it raked in all that money. I mean, I saw it like a bunch. Kate of Kate Winslet's tits. Right. But when I was you, a freshman in high school, Kate Winslet is she when I was too a, not a like her. When I was a freshman old, in high school, yeah, like way the, too old. <laughs> When I was a freshman in high school, the quickest way to a girl's heart was to take her to Titanic. Like, Black. so I saw it a bunch of times. In the you should take her to like Men in Black. You should take her well, to that nothing. movie was the best. So over. I love that. movie. Hey, by the way, by the way, that movie's nineteen years old. How old are you? Men in you? Black is nineteen. Yeah. Welcome to hell, buddy. God. Second one, and I get buried for this all the time. The Wizard of Oz. Really? Fuck the Wizard of Oz. Fuck its gimmick songs. Fuck, it's awful casting for Dorothy. Fuck the fact that it cut out the second half of the book. You know what's a tight movie? The made-for-TV movie Return to Oz. Yeah. With Feruza Bulk. Dude, that is. I haven't seen that since. That, is scary. that movie scared the shit out of me. Yeah, because, dude, everything in it is creepy. It's got. It's like watching Willow. It's just a creepy fantasy movie. Did you watch Bride of Boogity back in the day? Like, Do no. you remember that movie? No. no. My brother was in that one, too. Speaking of underrated movies, Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead super yeah, underrated horror movie. It's got Lance Henriksen and it's got Stan Winston doing it. And it has and friend I know of the show the Matthew Hurley. Yeah. My brother. Matt Hurley and my cousin Joel was in that. My my brother, his character is like the whole reason that movie even like has a storyline. He 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 carried that promotion. He jobbed. He <laughs> jobbed and he jobbed to a motorcycle. Yeah, he jobbed to a kid on a dirt bike. Right, that was tight, dude. Lance but Hendrickson's tight. My I number one house. fucking overrated piece of shit ever. This is put over as just the greatest film ever, and it's so fucking boring. Is it Gone with the Wind? It's Gone with the Wind! Oh, too sweet. You went way back. I hate that you fucking went, movie. You went way back. There are certain classic films that get put over, and then you watch them and go, wow, that's actually an excellently crafted movie. Sing in the Rain. Casablanca, anything Hitchcock ever did. 
Every Cagney movie. Angels with Dirty Faces. Underrated as hell. On Golden Pond. <laughs> <laughs> that was early 80s, but it's a tight movie. That is a tight movie. Yeah. Gone with the Wind. You basically get cucked for two and a half Ooh. hours waiting for him to deliver the line. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. And that's the only tight thing in the entire movie. Dude. That movie, I've never even like been able to get through the it. The Carol Burnett sketch making fun of the curtain scene is tighter than the movie itself. Hmm. It would have been cool to have this discussion during Christmas time, too, because like there's some super overrated Christmas movies out like there. Like every too. Christmas movie. No, I'm not dude. a I'm not a big Christmas movie mark. Just Die Hard? Die Hard, yeah. There's two kinds of people in this world. People that think Die Hard is a Christmas movie and people that are wrong. Indeed. Dude, your girl Momo posted that. Yeah, that she, was funny dude, she's, she's over for Bruce Willis. That made Everyone me laugh was. hella hard. T-Cat, like, what are some of your... No, I don't have any. I didn't prepare for this. No, like, but what are some movies that people always put over that you just like, fuck you. No. T-Cat's not really a movie guy. I only have, I only have wrestling stuff prepared because I thought we were going to talk about wrestling. I love that you say that because uh, off camera, you're one of the guys who are like, we need to put in some funny stuff that's not about wrestling. Because you love the breakfast for dinner talk. Yeah, because that was yeah. cool. This is like a disaster. You're a disaster. This isn't a disaster. Oh I like shooting on movies. I love because I love shooting on movies because it gives me a chance to shoot on shit eating normies that put over crap. Yeah. And the same kind of people who love WWE. Yeah, that's true. Do you have, do you have like underrated film in your I mind? Love anything? No, I'm talking to him. Pleasantville. Oh, he doesn't you've, either. You've buried it. Pleasantville's underrated. Yeah. It's my third favorite movie of all time, like, and no one ever puts it over. Tobey Maguire? Yeah, it put over Tobey Maguire, Paul Walker, and Reese Witherspoon, and like really launched their careers. Dude, Varsity Blues beautifully put over Paul Walker. What? Varsity Blues put over Paul Walker. God, dude. I love you and I both. Our underrated movies are Paul Walker. Yeah, dude, it's my number two favorite movie of all time. Varsity love, Blues. Love Paul Walker. Yeah. I cannot believe how touching and eloquent his send off was in Fast and Furious. One of the dumbest movie series of all time, and they actually had a really classy send-off for him. I haven't seen any of those movies. What? Not seen one Fast movie. We need to start at four, because that's when they get hella tight. Is that Tokyo Drift? No, that's uh. three. Because <laughs> at some point they decided, let's stop trying to appeal to the wiggers that stand around with their like neons and their giant spoilers in the parking lot of Target on Friday night that think they're tight. And let's just start making goofy ass over the top action movies. Do you the Rock know? is in them. Why you have you not know? seen them? I'm probably gonna catch heat for this, but my other overrated movie is Inception. God, I hate you're that movie. Shit eating normie. Why don't you go fucking watch The Force Awakens again? I hate. <laughs> I have seen it five times. God, I don't even talk about movies anymore. Like, cause I'm just gonna blow up you for being a shithead. I just don't like Inception. It's, it's a, yeah, it's probably because you didn't stupid. understand it. It was so complicated. No, I just didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't understand why people like put it over. You so didn't hard. understand I under it. No, it's just, that's fine. You don't it. understand like brilliant score, amazing pacing, directing, writing. It's fine. <laughs> that's it's fine. Whatever you're shit eating, normie. Fuck Whatever, you. dude. So mad at you right now. At least we agree on ET. Yeah, fuck. And it, Avatar. Too. Yeah, fuck Avatar. I, I told you, Avatar. it's way cooler to shoot on shitty movies than it is to listen to you shoot on tight movies. Yeah. Well, the tightest movie of all time is Forrest Gump. So. But the tightest movie of all time is Suburban Commando. That is true. It's a tight movie. <laughs> Jeff That's Ramsey, an underrated dude. film. That is an underrated my film. Under, my other underrated film was Reservoir Dogs. Love Reservoir Dogs. That's it's, it's That's not even slightly underrated. It's a Quentin Tarantino it movie. I think it's underrated in terms of... See, that's the movie you need to go see. Hateful Eight was tight. Yeah. You Tarantino, Mark? I'm not a Mark, but I like him a little bit. Yeah. Pulp Fiction's tight. Yeah, everyone loves Pulp Fiction. Yeah. I'm a Kill Bill Mark myself. Daddy D texts me from time to time and asks me just to like hit him with like... Like, to call him with, like, the Ving Rhames from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> like, the pawn shop scene where Bruce, where Bruce Willis says, Are we okay? He's like, Nah, man. We're pretty fucking far from okay. <laughs> you know? And he's like, So what now? And he's like, Let me tell you what now. I'm gonna call a couple of hard, pipe-hitting niggas to go to work on a home here with a pair of pliers and a blowtorch. You hear me talking, hillbilly boy? Dude. He's just like, hit me with the medieval. And he's like, I ain't through with you by a damn sight. I'm going to get medieval on your ass. Dude, Marcellus dude. Wallace is not a bitch. No, dude. So why are you fucking him like right. that? I love that movie so much. So dude, funny. Tarantino's dialogue is always just a gem. Every once in a while, my dad will call me and he'll be like, yo, buddy, I'm going to call up a couple of hard hitting pipe niggas. <laughs> That's what he tells me. My dad's funny like that, dude. Scott, to bring it back to wrap it up with wrestling. 
the the rest of this month is going to be crazy. Yeah, we're, we've got, got the DVD of release of All Star Weekend, which hopefully. is going to be insane. Yeah, hopefully we've that. got the Rumble, which might be mildly entertaining. We've got a New Japan event, it's Fantastica, the... coming up, which is going to feature Bushi versus Mascarada Dorada, which is going to be tight. It's after he was unmasked at New Day Dash. That's crazy heat. We are approaching Ring of Honor Las Vegas. That's going to be tight. And, yeah, go ahead and say what you want to say about <laughs> January 27th. January 27th, Lucha Underground's going to return and is going to drop a bomb load of Serial Lucha Madness until Smarks shit their pants. My Serial Lucha Madness? Yeah, my, so tight. My recent merch order that I made yesterday is guaranteed to be here by the 26th of January, which means on Lucha Underground night, I'll be able to debut on this podcast that merch it's tight and it will be in my opinion the most organically amazing pop you guys will ever have outside of the life is a work t-shirt even better than the das wunderkind car yeah because it'll be you guys will pop so hard for this merch order looking forward to it like bigger than the belt bigger than money in the bank bigger than the standboard this the car i'm I'm excited now i'm tingling in my nether regions I i don't know what this could be I don't, I don't even want to try and guess. No, I'm not going to. No. I, and I, as much as I have a hard time kayfabing things, I'm, like, going to enjoy kayfabing this more than anything. It's tight. God, it's going to be so tight. I hope it gets here earlier than that, though, because I just can't wait. So to shut this down, T-Cat, you got anything to add? You've been, been morose over there. Uh, well. The no, movie talk kind of squashed. Yeah, we're, like, way past an hour. Sting's going into the Hall of Fame. I think Vader, the Freebirds, and Owen Hart should join him. I don't care what the rest of the boss looks like. Liger, fuck you. Well, I, yeah, Liger. It's <laughs> pretty good. Well, Liger, great. That was good because it like, hits every level. Like, it's going to be, be, like, be like a perfect. It's going to be a class. massive class because it's 32 in Dallas, 100,000 people. I'm going to leave with this because you brought up Las Vegas Ring of Honor 14, the big crossover with New Japan. It's my personal goal to see a title defense. I want to see War Machine versus Matt Seidel and the future of Flight Ricochet. So make sure you guys tweet that to every Ring of Honor backstage personnel you can until they cave in and give us that match. Is it also a personal goal of yours to never go to a live event ever because of the future of Ricochet or Kirk Zuma? That's correct. You know what? I, we're off the line. Yeah, until I see Ricochet, Bob Boyd. If you listen to this podcast, you're gonna be in Vegas for a little while. Hook this up, man. Let's hang out. Podcast. Make sure you try to win that. Good night. Put them over on Hurley. I'm Lucha John. Peace.